You can crank all day, but if your vehicle isn't starting and you've got a P0335 and other crankshaft position sensor fault codes, then you ain't going anywhere in a hurry. So why not sit back and together we can run through the diagnostic testing methods used to determine what causes a crankshaft position sensor fault. Hi, I'm Tim, and if you have P0335, P0336, P0337, or P0338 fault codes, then you'll probably be experiencing misfires, rough idle, the vehicle not starting, and the beloved check engine light on the dash. There are a fair few things that can cause these codes and symptoms, including a damaged timing trigger wheel, timing belt, wiring, sensor, or ECU. But today, we're going to focus on how to thoroughly check the crankshaft sensor circuit and identify where a fault could lie. If after carrying out all these tests, you believe the ECU is at fault, then you can send your unit into us for a thorough test and rebuild by our specialist technicians, who can identify any faults and ensure they don't reoccur. But before we start our diagnosis, let's first understand what a crankshaft position sensor actually is and what its function is within an engine. The sensor sits in close proximity to the timing trigger wheel, which is attached to the crankshaft and it counts the number of teeth attached to the wheel to determine the exact position of the crankshaft during its rotation. This information is then fed to the engine ECU, which calculates the engine speed, and with assistance from data relayed from other sensors, such as the camshaft sensor, ultimately controls the timing of all events within an engine cycle. These sensors typically have three wires, a high and low reference, also known as a five volt supply and ground, and a signal wire, which is responsible for passing information to the ECU in the form of a square waveform. We'll start the diagnostic procedure by looking at any anomalies in the waveform, which should be sequentially repeating. To do this, we will need to know the tooth profile of the timing trigger wheel specific to the vehicle you are working on, so you know what the expected waveform should look like. To view this waveform, hook up an oscilloscope to the signal wire at the sensor connector and battery negative, and start or attempt to start the vehicle. The waveform should be free of noise and have clear peaks and troughs. Any missing waveforms could indicate a fault with the trigger wheel. However, abnormalities in the waveform shape and spikes in voltage amplitude could indicate a faulty sensor or circuit fault. If you observe the latter, then it's time to crack out the multimeter and start testing the crankshaft sensor circuit. Let's start by testing the crankshaft position sensor circuit is functioning correctly by checking it has good 5 volt and ground reference supplies. Ensure the ignition is switched off and then locate and disconnect the crankshaft sensor from its connector. Consult your vehicle's repair manual to determine which terminals correspond to the 5 volt supply, ground and signal circuits. Set your multimeter to volts DC and place the red probe on the 5 volt terminal at the sensor's connector and the black probe on battery negative and then look at the multimeter, which should read 5 volts. Move the red probe to the signal terminal and observe the reading, which should also be 5 volts. Finally, check the ground connection by moving the red probe to the positive battery terminal and the black probe to the ground terminal at the sensor connector. The reading this time should be battery voltage of around 12.6 volts. If these readings all check out OK, then the sensor itself is likely causing the fault codes to appear and will need to be replaced. However, if any of the readings were incorrect, then we need to investigate further to determine if the fault lies within the wiring loom or ECU. It is at this point where the fault codes you are experiencing can help determine what the cause of the fault could be and how to test for it. As you can see, P0335 crankshaft position sensor circuit malfunction can be flagged by a variety of issues, such as a short to ground, short to voltage, and an open or high resistance. So identifying any secondary fault codes for high or low circuit inputs here is very handy. P0336 is caused by an inconsistent or incorrect signal being sent to the ECU, which can be caused by bad wiring or poor connections between pin terminals and plugs. Now you know what your fault codes mean, let's figure out where in the circuit the faults could lie. Conduct the same test as before on the wire or wires which gave you an incorrect reading, but this time probe at the ECU connector. If these readings are now within the expected ranges,
then you have a fault in the wiring loom between the ECU and the crankshaft sensor. If you are still getting bad readings, then disconnect the ECU connector with the ignition off and inspect it for any damage or corrosion, as a bad connector can be the cause of multiple fault codes and circuit issues. If it looks good, then refer back to the bad reading from the test at the connector, which will either be higher or lower than the expected range. If any of the readings were lower than expected, then you should have a P0335 and or P0337 fault code, which could be caused by a short to ground in the 5 volt and signal circuits or excess resistance in all three circuits. To distinguish if the fault lies within the wiring loom or ECU, turn the ignition off and disconnect the ECU connector. Then remove the wire which was giving an incorrect reading using a terminal removal tool to disconnect the wire at the ECU side. Plug the connector back in, turn the ignition on and retest at the ECU connector. If the reading is now good, then there is a fault within the wiring loom which will need to be repaired. But if the reading was still incorrect, then there is a fault within the ECU which will need to be remanufactured. To confirm the bad reading is only within the ECU, complete a continuity test between the affected terminal at the sensor connector and battery negative. If any continuity is displayed here, then there is a fault within the wiring loom which has in turn caused damage to the ECU. If this is the case, then both the loom and the ECU will need repairing. Now we've looked at low voltage readings, let's look at how to locate a fault causing a high voltage reading. With the ignition off, disconnect the ECU connector and remove the signal terminal from it using the terminal removal tool. Plug it back in and turn the ignition back on. And this time, probe at the terminal which has been removed. If voltage is present within the wire, then there is a short to voltage present within the loop. To confirm this, move the red probe to the corresponding terminal on the ECU and check the multimeter reading again. If 5 volts is displayed here, then you can confirm the fault lies only within the loop. However, if the voltage reading remains high, then there is also a short within the ECU which will need to be remanufactured. If during any of these checks you suspect the loom to be at fault and you want to determine which wire or wires need repairing, perform a continuity test between the known affected wire which gave an incorrect reading and every other pin on the ECU connector. If any other pins show signs of resistance, then they will be shorted to the wire you are testing and will require repairing. If you know your loom is good and the fault lies with just your ECU, then send your unit in to us for remanufacturing. We will retest your unit and confirm the diagnosis on our hardware in the loop test rigs and then rebuild the unit whilst retaining all prior coding. All you need to do is plug it back in and off you go. We hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and if you have any questions, then ask them down below and we will get back to you as soon as we can. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.